All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. So as you can see, we've got the bed all fully set up and assembled here, and we only have to do a few small finishing things today, and we will be completely done. I'm hoping that by the end of today, I've got the first coat of finish on this thing, but we still have a decent amount of work to do to it before we can get there. So the first thing I want to deal with is adding in the edge profile to the top of our footboard here. As you can see on our side rails, we have that nice three-quarter round over running all the way through, and then I stopped it right in the corner here. Because what we need to do is we need to somehow make this three-quarter round over interact nicely between this corner and the footboard and all these pieces here. So I don't quite know how well it's going to work. I know that's going to take some fine-tuning and finessing in this inside corner here to make that round over actually look good. So I'm really just going to have to kind of go for it and fix it as I see fit. Because anytime you're putting a round over in a corner, it's never going to look great. But the important thing to remember here is that this is also an inside corner. As soon as there's a mattress sitting inside this bed frame, you're never going to see this corner anyway. So it's not critical that it needs to look absolutely beautiful. So we're now done the footboard. I'm standing over on this side of the shop right now because this is exactly where my uh, air filter pumps out. So I know that the air over here is for the most part cleaner than it is in the rest of the shop. That's, I'm gonna go with that anyway because I can't wear that mask for very much longer. Anyway, the footboard and the side rails, all that profile is now on there. It came out beautiful. Surprisingly enough, that roundover bit going into that corner actually didn't do as bad of a job as I thought it was going to. I thought it was gonna leave a much you know, grosser looking transition. And overall, I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all. So overall, our roundover profile on the whole bed frame is looking good. Now, the very, very last step of this entire thing is to clean up the headboard. And the headboard is actually in really amazing condition. Through all the moving that I've had to do with it, through all the setup of the bed right now, it hasn't gotten banged up at all. So all we have to do is just cut off those dowels, uh, clean up the areas where we cut off the dowels, and then go through and just sand a few smaller areas, add the round over on the top edge, then go through and shim out our panels. And then that's it. This is actually really insane because I know like two or three days ago, I was sitting here going, I'm never gonna finish this bed. It feels like the project that it's just gonna last, you know, months and months and months. And now, you know, a few days later, we've got a fully built king size bed in the garage. It's looking beautiful. The majority of it is fully sanded up and ready for finish. All we have to do is the last kind of finishing touches, and then we can actually put finish on this thing. But we are so close to being done. Okay, so before we add in the roundover profile to the top edge here of the headboard, I want to talk about it because this is going to be a slightly dangerous operation and I think it's important for you guys as well as myself to understand the safety precautions that are being put in place here to make it not as dangerous. So obviously I need to mention when we're talking about safety, I have the router unplugged right here. You can see I can pull the trigger, nothing's coming on. I'm not that dumb to be playing around with a live router while I'm doing demonstrations. And so that brings me to the first safety point is the router I'm using specifically. This router has that electronic switch on it. So it doesn't really matter what router you're using here. If you can get one that has an electronic switch where you, as soon as you let your hand go, the router will turn off. That's gonna be a lot safer because if 
for some reason I start to drop the router, I, I can just loosen my hand off of the trigger there and the router will start to turn off. So that is, that is the number one safety feature right here. So if you have a router where you're just flipping a switch to turn it on and that falls off, you now have a live router that you have to get back into control or you just have to fully evacuate the scenario there and go and pull the plug wherever that is. This is why I'm a huge fan of, of the electronic switch on this Bosch router. I don't know if there's any other brands that actually do this. I think that Festool has it as well. But as far as I know, it's only Festool and Bosch that have this feature. To me, this trigger on the grips is the same kind of a safety feature as like the saw stop. You know, it's one of those things where if the worst happens, you can very easily and very quickly prevent yourself from getting injured. The other thing I'm going to be doing here to keep this nice and safe is I'm going to be taking very small passes. So on most of the other areas, I've been doing two passes. Some areas I've only been doing one pass uh, because, you know, if I'm in a nice stable position, I can plunge the bit all the way down to its final depth and just make one cut. So here I'm in kind of an awkward position just to have my body in. My arms are up, and up here and the bit is in line with, you know, kind of the vital areas of my body. So I'm going to be taking three passes in order to do this nice and safely and removing a very little amount of material with each pass. That way the bit is never bogging down. The router is going to be much less likely to catch or do anything weird like that. And so I actually forgot to mention probably the biggest thing here is I'm pulling the router rather than pushing it because you have the two different options. So the problem is if you're pushing the router and the bit catches and becomes self-feeding, the, the router is going to come back towards you, which is a really bad thing. Whereas if you're pulling and the router catches and becomes self-feeding, it's going to pull away from you. So the router is going to take off in that direction. I can just step back this way. And if worse comes to worse, the router is going in that direction. My body is going in this direction. Our momentums are going completely opposite. I'm not going to end up getting a router in the face. Whereas if I'm pushing the router along and it, and it catches and becomes self-feeding, I'm going to be stepping back. The router is going to be coming right back at me. So that is probably the biggest thing here. I can't believe I forgot to mention that beforehand. Always, always, always when you're using the router, always try to pull rather than push. There's going to be some occasions where you do have to push, but in most cases, if you can pull it, that's going to be a decent amount safer. And especially when you're doing something like this where it's already slightly dangerous, definitely take any advantage you can possibly get. That hurt. <laughs> all right, so that is basically it. So all that's left to do now is trimming off these little shims uh, that are holding the panels in here. And I'm going to leave them for a little while, let the uh, hide glue tack up a little bit, because right now it is still a little bit sticky, and I don't want to get that on my chisels mainly. But all I'll do is I'll just go in, give it a whack with the chisel, It'll fall right off. I'll clean it up a little bit. We'll do some nice finish sanding to get rid of any hide glue that's still stuck on there. And then we will be completely done and ready to go. So while I wait for this to tack up, I'm actually going to run out and pick up the poplar we need for building the interior area here. The only annoying thing is I can't go to the normal lumber yard that I like because I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the project. They only sold poplar in 12 foot length. Even if I brought my circular saw with me and cut it in half there, it just, the math just doesn't work out. I'd, I'd end up with so much excess poplar, it'd be really annoying to deal with. So I'm going to go to my backup lumber yard, uh, which is Formations Inc. here in Calgary. They, I'm hoping that they sell poplar in a different size. Uh, they also do have a much wider selection, it seems like, but the trick is you don't get to pick out what you want. So I have to be I have to be a little bit more welcoming with whatever it is I get. Okay, so back from the lumber yard, I got the poplar stacked over there, and I must say poplar is one of the ugliest looking woods, but again, it's, we're using it for bed slats, so it's not that big of a deal. 
One thing I do want to mention, and the reason that I say that Formations Inc. here in Calgary is kind of my backup lumber yard, uh, is exactly for the reason here. Uh, because I went there looking for about 24 board feet of four quarter poplar for our slats and our center runners there. Now that's assuming that every board I get was exactly four inches wide by eight feet long. That, that would be exactly 24 board feet. Now what I ended up paying for was 38 board feet because what they ended up picking out, there was a lot more variation to it and there's always a little bit of overcharge that every single lumber yard does, which pisses me off, but it is what it is. There's not really anything you can do about it. But my issue with that is again, I went there expecting to buy 24 board feet of four quarter poplar. I ended up paying for 38. That's a pretty big discrepancy in there that I'm not super thrilled about and I don't really get a choice in it. That's, and again, that's mainly why I have a primary lumber yard that I go to and a backup lumber yard because the nice thing about these guys is they definitely have a much wider range of stock, yeah. but I uh, wanna try and get all of our slats built and installed and all that. Just I wanna get the bed completely done today. That is my goal. I wanna get it done and get that first coat of finish on it in the evening. And then hopefully it is just done. That way tomorrow, all I have to do is put one coat of finish on it. And then, then it's officially done. But pretty much today, all the construction of it will be completely done. But before we do that, a package arrived while I was out and I wanna open it up for in front of you guys because it is super exciting. Uh, and it's uh, it's related to the channel here. So we'll uh, open this up real quick. So I can't tell you guys where the package is from because that'll very quickly give it away and I don't wanna do that. But I will just show you guys very quickly what is in here because it's pretty exciting. So we've got some Sec Corp. I believe that's how you say that. Whatever, C Tough Epoxy. So this is the same 500 epoxy you guys have seen me use to fill a lot of spaces on the bed here. I really love this brand of epoxy. They make really good, uh, pretty quick carrying epoxy. I hear that the C Tough stuff is supposed to be really good for what this project is gonna be. We've also got some quarter inch brass rod, two small pieces of it. Then in the bottom of the box, we've got three pieces of 1084 steel. So that's, uh, that, that should be the biggest hint of uh, what might be coming up here. And then this bottom piece is just some uh, sandpaper, about a, a bunch of higher grits that I don't normally work with. So I'll leave this up to you guys' imaginations. Let me know in the comments what you think is gonna be coming out here. So this is our stack of poplar. This piece of eight quarter, what we're gonna be doing with it is splitting it basically into three pieces. We're gonna take one section off that is gonna be a square blank. And we're gonna use that for our legs on our center support pieces. We're gonna use the other two pieces and mount them to either of our side rails and that'll be what our slats are actually sitting on. So we're probably not gonna get around to doing our first coat of finish today, but I'm also really glad I didn't rush ahead and do that because there is so much dust being produced from making these slats 
uh, and the, you know, all the structure on the inside, that the bed is now covered in dust. And if we had a finish on there, even though Osmo is one of the finishes, you know, a lot like Tread and True, where it's not really affected by dust, you know, it's not a big deal if a little bit of dust builds up on it. Uh, anytime you have a wet finish, the last thing you want is to have a bunch of dust build up on it. That's, that's just never good. So what that's gonna mean though, is if I can get this slot structure done today, then tomorrow I can spend the day cleaning the shop. You know, I can just, I can get everything completely dust free because I know we're not gonna be making any more dust for a few days. And then we can go through and do apply finish because I need to make sure the shop is completely dust free. And that is the most important thing. So now to finish off the slots, all I need to do is take my big long stretcher pieces here that are eight quarter stock and measure, lay out, and do all my pre-drilling for my screws. So we're gonna lay out all these holes, start the hole with a forstner bit, finish it off with whatever size bit you use to pre-drill a number eight screw, I gotta look that up. Then we can take these over to the bed frame, transfer our holes over, pre-drill our holes into the maple because we really don't wanna be splitting any wood on those side rails. But overall, it should be that easy to get this thing done today. So we are definitely going to have the whole physical structure of this bed done today. Uh, we just not, we're just not gonna get that first coat of finish on it like I would have liked to. All right, so I feel like this section needs a little more explanation. In order to get this sidebar into place, I have two spacer blocks that are the exact same thickness as my slats that are being pressed up against that round over that's on the bottom side of that top stretcher of the side rail. So that's a very complex way of saying I just wanted this, this sidebar to be just slightly below so that our mattress is sitting only about four inches into the bed frame. Now I started by just putting in two screws, just enough so that they would make a mark. I then pre-drilled those holes, then I could take the whole rail off, finish pre-drilling the rest of the holes, and then put the side rail back on. So overall, very complex way of marking out all my screw locations, but also highly effective. Uh, the last thing that we need to do to this that I'm going to save till do tomorrow morning because I am exhausted and I need to get out of the shop tonight uh, is we need to add some blocks under these rails, under these middle rails uh, on the footboard and the headboard. So you'll just have to drop these two rails on top of those blocks that we're going to screw in and then, and then you'll put your slats in on top of those, screw them on, and you should be good to go. Because the legs for these bottom pieces are on this slat and the slat that I'm currently sitting on. So that's where our weight is going down. So in the middle here, we have one stretcher and then another foot, uh, but on the, on the two ends, we have two stretchers without any kind of support underneath them. So it's not that there's a problem, there's no weakness there. All we need to do is just give them something to sit on. So we're just gonna screw a block to the bottom side of the headboard, then the inside of the footboard there. And again, these, these bottom support pieces are going to then sit on top of there and then disperse the weight even more. So that way there'll be nothing rocking around, you know. In the middle here, we are completely solid. Nothing's moving, it's absolutely beautiful. But it's really, if you just push, push right in the middle, uh, that's where you're gonna notice a little bit. So we can take that out in all of 30 seconds by making up four little blocks, screwing them on, and then we'll be done. So that means even though tomorrow is a fairly short day in the shop because I have to go to the market in the afternoon, uh, I will be trying to smash out as much progress on here as I possibly can. So we have to make those blocks, get them attached. Then we're gonna go through, take all of the poplar stuff off, apply our finish to everything. Sometime in this whole store, we have to clean up the shop pretty good, get it, pretty, get it fairly dust-free as much as I can, at least the stuff around the bed. 
Then we can apply our first coat of finish. We'll apply one coat of finish to this poplar. And again, we're gonna have to find some point in here to do a little bit of cleanup work on the poplar, just break the edges so it's not such a hazard because right now it is still fairly sharp. So once we get all that stuff done tomorrow, that means that the bed is completed and we are good to go. It just has to sit for a few days before I deliver it to the client, which I'm, I'm hoping to do on Sunday so I can just get it out of the shop and it's not gonna be in my way anymore. So that means that there's gonna be one more video on this project and then we will hopefully be done with it after that unless anything else comes up. So as always guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.